In this video, we are going to discuss the complete Verilog code of FIFO that is first in, first out with explanation. You can see here I have created a dedicated playlist for FIFO in both Hindi and English languages. In first video, we have discussed the basics of FIFO, what is first in, first out, how it works, how we can perform read and write operation, what are the application of FIFO. Then in second video, we have discussed how we can solve multiple numericals based on the FIFO, the FIFO depth calculation which is most of the time asked in your interviews in your written exams so we have discussed all those things variety of questions you will get there in the video and this is the third video where we are going to discuss the very law coding of the FIFO if you are watching my videos first time do subscribe VLSI point because here you will get all the related content of VLSI how you can make your career and how you can build a strong concept of very law so do subscribe it guys so let's start today's video this is how our very law code of FIFO is starting so let's do one thing here first we will see the entire code so that you will get a bigger picture and then we will start discussing each and every line one more thing guys if you face any issue related to your career any doubt then you can directly connect with me on instagram and discuss there so you can see here in this code first we have done the module declaration module name people we have given then the input output signals parameters value we have given here then some registers and the signal this is the another part of this code where we have performed the right process the read process and finally this is the last part where we have done the data storage data retrieval and the status output before moving to the first part let's see this figure of fifo here i have taken 16 by 8 fifo you can take any size and the input which we are taking here is log reset write enable read enable and the data in which is of 8 bit the outputs are full empty and data out which is of 8 bits again this write enable signal means whenever you have to perform the write operation this write enable signal should be high and in case of read operation this read enable should, signal should be high then only you can perform the read operation so starting with the first part of this code module then the module name people i have given here then i have done the declaration of all input output signals so clock reset write enable read enable data in data out empty and full here i have mentioned this data in and data out size in terms of data width which i have explained here in the parameter parameter depth equals to 16 parameter data width equals to 8 why we are taking this parameter here actually you can directly write this code by using this size the specific size but the benefit here is that whenever you just want to change the size of your fifo so that time you need not to change the entire code Simply you have to just change the value of this parameter and here you are ready to go. So this is the benefit of using parameters. So parameter depth size is 16 here, parameter data width size is 8 here. Another parameter is PTR size which is equal to 5 which we are taking to indicate the pointer size. Here we have taken a memory. This is a register array that represents the storage for the FIFO elements. So the depth of this memory is the 0 up to depth minus 1 that is 16. And the width is data width minus 1 down to 0 which is 8. So this is a register array where we can store total 8 number of datas and each data is of 8 bits. This is the meaning here. Then we have taken write PTR and read PTR. So these registers keep track of the write and read positions within the feed. And finally the empty reg and the full reg. So these registers track the empty and full status of the people. Coming to the next part of this code where we have started the write process. So always at pausage clock or pausage reset. So here this pausage reset in sensitivity list is indicating that the reset is not synchronous. It is an asynchronous reset. Then in begin end, if reset, then zero is given to this right PTR. That means if your FIFO is in reset condition, then obviously the zero will be given to the right PTR. Zero will be given to the right PTR. That means FIFO is empty, nothing is there. Another condition is right enable and full red should be low. That means right enable signal should be high and full reg value should be low. That time your write PTR will be incremented by 1. Mean to say this write PTR register is incremented when the write enable signal is active and this condition which we are giving here it is indicating that a write operation is enabled and the FIFO is not full. Then we have written another always block always at pausage clock or pausage reset in case of full. Obviously if the reset signal is high that means your FIFO is in reset condition and it will be empty. So this empty register value should be high. Else another condition is given here, write enable then 
full register should be low, write interval should be high and write PTR not equal to the read PTR. In that condition, 0 is assigned to this empty register. Otherwise, another condition is there if read enable signal is high and write PTR equals to the read PTR plus 1. So, in that condition, 1 is given to the empty register. That means the register is empty here. So, here what I just want to say that this empty register, empty reg, that means the register is updated based on the state of the FIFO. If a write operation occurs, that means the condition which we are seeing here, write PTR not equal to the read PTR, this line, it indicates that the FIFO is not empty. So, 0 is given to the empty reg. Another condition which is given here, it indicates that the FIFO will become empty, so this empty reg will be high. This is the meaning. Another always block is here where we are updating the status of full register. So, always at pause edge clock or pause edge reset, then if reset signal is high, then obviously your FIFO will be empty, it will not be full, so 0 will be assigned to this full reg. Otherwise, the condition is if write enable is high and write PTR equals to the read PTR, that means your FIFO is full. Actually, you are at the ending of this FIFO. So, here we are giving 1 to this full register. Otherwise, if read enable signal is high and empty reg is low, in that condition, 0 is given to the full register, which is indicating that the FIFO is not full. Then we are moving towards the read process. So, the read PTR register is incremented when the read enable signal is active. And the condition which you can see here, if reset is high, then obviously this read PTR value will be 0. Else, the condition is given if read enable is high and empty register is low. In that condition, read PTR value will be incremented by 1. So, this is how we can perform the read process. Coming to the last part where we have written the code for data storage, data retrieval and the status output. So, always at pause edge clock or pause edge reset, if reset is there, then we have initialized the value of the memory. So, what is the meaning of this line? Memory, then the non-blocking assignment, tick, default, colon, data bit and the one tick PZ. What is the meaning of this line? So, memory refers to the register array used to store the data element in the FIFO. Then we have a non-blocking assignment which represents, which means the assignment is scheduled to occur after the current time step in the simulation. Then we have this default colon, data width and then one tick B. So, this construct is called a replication operator and it is used to replicate the value specified after the colon a certain number of times. So, here default colon data width which indicates that the value 1 tick bz should be replicated data width time. So, in conclusion we can say the line initializes the memory register array with a default value of 1 tick bz for each element. This means that when the FIFO is reset or powered on all the elements in the memory will be an initialized or unknown state. The actual data will be written into the memory during the subsequent write. So, this is how we have initialized the memory. Else, the condition is given if the write enable signal is high and the FIFO is not full. So, in that condition, obviously, this data in value will be given to the memory at the write PTR location. Then, in data retrieval part, we are assigning the value to this data out. So, empty reg, if its value is high, if the FIFO is empty, that time unknown value is given to the data out. Otherwise, if it is not empty, then read PTR location value of the memory will be assigned to the data. And finally, the status output where we are assigning this the reg to the empty and the full reg to the full and the end module. So, this is how you can write a complete Verilog code of FIFO that is first and first out. I hope it is clear to you. Once again, we can revise this code. In first part, we have done the module declaration, the input-output declaration, the parameters part, registers and the signals. Then we have moved towards the write process and updated the empty register and the full register state. Then we have written the code for the read process. And finally, how you can store the data in this memory, that is the uh, register array, how you can retrieve the data from the FIFO and the status output. So this is a very simple code. I hope it is clear to you. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment box. If you want a specific video of any topic related to the VLSI, do let me know in the comment box guys. I'll make a dedicated video on that. Also, you can directly connect with me on Instagram and DM your doubts. So, this is it guys. This is about today's video. You can join our community VLSI point on Telegram group. Discuss your small doubts with your peers. We update the job vacancies there and share some useful materials also. So, it will be helpful for you if you will join that community. So thanks for watching today's video. See you soon in the next video.